All right, welcome everyone. This is Moxum. Uh, today's video, I just want to go through uh, a song from the beginning. And uh, today I want to do a video uh, mostly geared around the Symphonian because everything is kind of geared around the Symphonian. Uh, but that'll give you, a, I'm getting a bit used to it, so I'd like to give uh, my impression of a better idea of um, how I'm using it. And uh, yeah, so uh, we'll just we'll just start from here. Um, basically, the first thing to point out with the Symphonian right now, and with the setup that I have, is uh, I have I have a Life Forms um, oscillator, which just generates a tone. I don't have envelopes for it right now, so it's just cranking out. It's just going to be cranking out um, a non-gated continuous tone. Uh, the same the same thing. The same thing is the current situation uh, with the E370. So it's playing chords from the Symphonian, and it doesn't it doesn't have an envelope either. So so again, uh, the Symphonian is the main orchestrator of everything. It's kind of a middleman. I'll explain that in a second. All the triggers for the drums and for the synthesizers. Uh, are coming from the Volterra, which is works in unison with the, the Metron sequencer. So basically what you have here is you're going to have voltages coming in and then voltages going out. It's going to be quantized to whatever chord I tell it. Right now it's playing an F minor. So I can switch that with the root and the degree. So basically you've got five parts. This part here is the chord, and that's going to be being played by the E370. And it's just constantly, unless I gate it, which I can't do right now or, or, or put an envelope on, it's just going to put, it's just going to put whatever chord I tell it. So right now it's just kind of a pad, and that's just the way it's going to be, but I can do a chord progression with the Symphonian. The amazing thing is I can kind of write whatever, I can write whatever music I want in whatever whatever key, and the Symphonian will switch it to whatever I tell it to, which is totally amazing. And it plays five different instruments. So, like I said, the E three seventy is playing four parts. So what you uh, and the thing to know about this is you don't have to have an input for it. It's just constantly outputting those. So if we're to peek around over here. You've got outputs one, two, three, and four, and that's the only thing output of this section. Okay, so that's gonna be playing a chord pretty much no matter what right now, uh, unless I mute it in the mixer, which it's in this channel, uh, but I have it sending to an effect. And it's pre-mixer, so there it is. Okay. So, we'll jump right into the drum machine and the sequencer. Um, I already picked out a drum, so I am just basically going to go to that, put a kick drum in. Put some hi-hats in, so in this channel here. So, I'm getting back with the Symphonian, uh, the first channel here, it goes to the Neutron. And the way that we can, we can program it is, uh, it, does have, it does have a trigger going to it, so if I, it's, I have it in my first one, two, three, and four, I have uh, Okay, so I'm going to show you this too. 
um, when, you, when you first start working on a song, um, you're gonna want to put this in tune mode. Let me mute the kick drum a little bit. I'll turn the, I'll turn the volume off on it and I'll turn the effect off on it a bit. Turn the highs down a bit. Take the effect off of this. All right, so you can put this into tune mode. I'm gonna go to my Pittsburgh modular here and I have a little tuner and it is actually running off of the mono output on the mixer which is really nice so I can just send that right to my tuner and then I can just fine tune on the life forms there's a tune and a fine tune knob I take these off because uh, there's a less it's less likely that I'm gonna bump it <laughs> you'll notice that on the uh, I also do that on the neutrons. Yeah, right there and right there. Also, anyway, yeah, we'll just, I'll just tune that just a smidge. Okay, so, okay, so I got the E370 tuned in, and that was the last thing I had to tune, so I can actually, uh, at this point, I can, I can, I can turn my, whew, I can turn my tone, tune button off which is nice, so you'll want to remember to do that. Uh, tune everything up, tune all your oscillators up. I'm gonna turn this down. It's loud and droning, so. Get our kick drum back up. And, uh, right, so, what I'm gonna do now is, uh, oh, we'll do some, some bass in here, I guess. Uh, but the thing to know about that, so, this lightforms oscillator is connected to the fifth part of the symphonian, which let me zoom in here. So that Pittsburgh modular oscillator is in on this section and it's not moving right now. The reason it's not moving is because I have a clock input in it. So if I if I unplug if I unplug the clock input, you can see it starts lighting up in the same time as the regular clock, which uh, I'm sending from the sequencer. Okay. And uh, let me plug this clock back in. So I have on my sequencer the clock, and what I can do, I think it's on the third one, I can just put some randomness in here. And you can see that now, instead of just constantly playing its arpeggio, uh, arpeggiator, I've got it going just a little bit. And what we can do is we can turn that Pittsburgh modular up. Yeah, there we go. So now I have control over pitch. And I have control over uh, which notes are playing. And the spread. The nice thing about the mixer too is if you start clipping, it's gonna it's gonna <laughs> throw these red LEDs at you. It's great. You should be able to hear it too, but yeah. Nice to route this uh, uh, this Pittsburgh modular through the plasma drive. Let me show you that. It's pretty fun. Uh, Yeah, so that's what I have for now without any uh, without any envelope for the for the Yeah, this pretty much gets one sound once you start running it through this. Yeah, 
so <clears throat> so you can hear it's different it's a little bit different now you can you can actually change this at will it's pretty cool kind of like crank away too drum I've got two kick drums and they're both uh, they're what you're seeing uh, banging away here uh, right here and right here so those those output to uh, channel one switch a and B so I got both of them here so we can hear you can hear one of them you can hear the other one that can be played that way but then I've also got them sent through uh, kind of sent through the Erica filter here So, uh, yeah, now let's, uh, I've been toying around with, with, uh, originally I had the, uh, originally I had the bass in this channel, uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll throw a, we'll throw a sequence from the Neutron, and, and I'm going to do it the same way, I'm going to control it from, uh, from here, so basically I can send triggers to it, and that's going to send the notes, uh, and it'll constantly be playing just like that, if I have the, uh, the VCA bias up. So after I start, after I put in a couple notes, I'll turn that off. Yeah. Ugh. I really need a GoPro strapped to my head. <laughs> now, this isn't going to be the best written stuff I'm having to do with one hand. So hopefully, uh, pretty soon here I figure out something better to do with the cameras. Is, uh, as I, I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll through the voltages and you'll see it change on here so
we want at any time I can I can just turn. show you too is uh, as far as the drums go I, I have this branches or excuse me I have this branches by mutable instruments a friend of mine gave me uh, so shout out to Captain Dave uh, for the branches now what this what this what we can do with this you can see I've got four uh, drums right here they're coming into here but I'm actually only sending two triggers uh, and I can uh, one trigger gets split into two which goes into the drum machine and then you have, uh, it's only going to play either one or the other, and there's a, a randomness, a coin flip based on uh, the probability based on either 50-50 or one leading towards one or the other. So it's pretty cool, and hopefully you can hear me well. Uh, and so I have two of those, so I can run those to here. So if I go back over to, uh, I, I know that these are actually... get into the fine details of this uh, device just kind of how I'm using it and you'll kind of have to pick it up from the videos I do from that but if you want like the, the definitive information just go to Matthias Kettner's uh, go to his go to his videos uh, there, there's a link should be a link in the description so anyway uh, join the Facebook group if you like the videos uh, this one is kind of nutty it's a little different way of doing things today so it's kind of a dry run of some tape together stuff so um anyway i hope you guys enjoy remember to like and subscribe and uh yeah thanks leave some comments if you want Thank you.